Calprotectin is a protein. And the major cells that produce calprotectin are neutrophils. Calprotectin is present in the serum, saliva, but also calprotectin is present in the feces. The specific function of calprotectin is to bind divalent ions as calcium and zinc. The purpose of this binding is to inhibit bacterial growth. Because once calprotectin binds calcium and zinc, bacteria cannot use them for their metabolism, and by this calprotectin can block bacterial growth. So let's explain this in details. Here we have blood compartment, intestinal tissue, in this case it's a mucous membrane, and intestinal lumen. Neutrophils live in the blood, and neutrophils inside them have a variety of different granules and proteins, and one of such proteins is calprotectin. Neutrophils can enter into the intestinal tissue, and from intestinal tissue, neutrophils can secrete calprotectin into the intestinal lumen. In the lumen of the intestine, we have a small amount of pathogenic bacteria. Bacteria desperately need calcium and zinc for their metabolism, mostly for oxidative processes. Because by oxidative processes, bacteria generate energy for their growth and proliferation. Calprotectin binds calcium and zinc, and by this calprotectin do not let bacteria get this metal ions. Instead, calcium and zinc together with calprotectin goes further through the intestine, and finally we excrete them into the feces. In normal condition, the concentration of calprotectin is less than 50 micrograms per milligram. Why calprotectin is so important for us? Because the concentration of calprotectin is directly related to the migration of neutrophils to the mucous membrane of the intestine. So, by measuring of fecal calprotectin, we can assess the severity of mucosal inflammation. What is even more important is that calprotectin do not increase during non-intestinal inflammation. So, calprotectin is a specific marker of intestinal inflammation. And as we know, in medicine, we very like everything highly specific. The first condition where we use calprotectin is inflammatory bowel disease. Ulcerative colitis or Crohn disease are characterized by repeated cycles of disease activation, which manifest primarily by inflammation. And in both these pathologies, symptoms are also caused by mucosal inflammation. So in these two disorders, it's crucial for us to assess mucosal inflammation. But the problem is that endoscopic methods as colonoscopy are highly expensive and invasive procedures. So in this scenario, non-invasive markers as calprotectin becomes immensely important. And by measuring of calprotectin, we can assess not only the severity of inflammation, but also the extent of mucosal healing. Nowadays, we also know that calprotectin directly correlates not only with disease activity, but also with histological and endoscopic scores. So let's explain this in details. Crohn disease and ulcerative colitis cause autoimmune inflammation of the intestinal wall. Inflammation induces chemotaxis of neutrophils, which results in increasing amount of neutrophils that income to intestinal tissue. With increasing amount of neutrophils, the secretion of calprotectin into the intestinal lumen increase. With increasing amount of calprotectin molecules, the binding of metal ions increase. This results in formation of a high amount of calprotectin complexes. And because we excrete calprotectin with feces, the concentration of calprotectin in the feces increase. And the concentration of calprotectin higher than 50 we consider pathological. So, as we see, the major reason why in this condition patient will have increased concentration of calprotectin in the feces is autoimmune inflammation of the intestine. And the more severe is the intestinal inflammation, the higher is the amount of neutrophils in the intestinal tissue, and thereby the higher is the amount of calprotectin in the intestinal lumen. 
So the concentration of cold protectin in the feces directly correlates with the severity of intestinal inflammation. Here we see a study that analyzed the relationship between the concentration of calprotectin and the severity of inflammation that was determined based on endoscopy. So, in normal condition, calprotectin concentration should be around 50. In active phase of ulcerative colitis in patients with stage 2 endoscopic inflammation, calprotectin was 102. In stage 3 endoscopic inflammation, the concentration was 235, and in stage 4, 611. So the concentration of calprotectin directly correlates with mucosal inflammation. Because of these features, calprotectin is widely used in patients with ulcerative colitis and Crohn disease. First of all, we determine calprotectin to diagnose. But also, it's a valuable marker in management of patients. For example, if we have to assess how successful is the treatment response. Calprotectin becomes especially important in differential diagnosis between inflammatory bowel disorders and irritable bowel syndrome. Because sometimes symptoms can be the same, but in first case inflammation is severe and thereby calprotectin will be elevated, and in the second case inflammation is absent, so calprotectin will be normal. But we have to remember that calprotectin is not a marker of just inflammatory bowel disorders, it's a marker of intestinal mucosal inflammation. And there are other pathologies that can cause mucosal inflammation. And one of them is dysbacteriosis. For example, it can be Clostridium difficile infection. In Clostridium difficile infection, there are too many pathogenic bacteria in the intestine. With increasing amount of bacteria, the toxins production increase. And toxins can damage intestinal epithelia. Damage to the epithelium causes inflammation of the mucous membrane. Inflammation induces chemotaxis of neutrophils. With chemotaxis, the amount of neutrophils in the mucous membrane of the intestine increase. And with increasing neutrophils, the secretion of calprotectin into the intestinal lumen increase. With increasing calprotectin, the binding of divalent ions increase. So the lesser amount of calcium and zinc will be available for bacteria. But also, it will cause increase in total amount of calprotectin complexes in the intestinal lumen. And because we excrete these calprotectin complexes, this will cause increase in calprotectin concentration in the feces. And calprotectin concentration greater than 50 we consider pathological. So, as we see, the reason why in this case we have increased amount of calprotectin in the feces is bacterial inflammation that caused increase in chemotaxis and thereby increase in amount of neutrophils in the mucous membrane. And as we know, calprotectin secretion is directly proportional to the amount of neutrophils in the mucous membrane.